We have a lot going on, not only in the weather, but up in the skies. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to keep your eye to the sky in this next month as we do have a lot of spectacular astronomy events happening. All right, I want to give you a quick look at this, uh, what we're tracking this weekend here. We are going to be looking at some rain across the Midwest and into the Mid-Atlantic, some showers, thunderstorms in the southeast, and there will be accumulating snow in northern New England, and the parade of storms continue into the northwest with rain and heavy amounts of snow. In the mountains, we'll uh, drive things out, though, across Texas, Bree. All righty, and as December begins, you'll want to keep your eyes to the skies for meteors and cold moons. Guiding us through the celestial marvels awaiting us this month is AccuWeather astronomy expert Brian Leda. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, Bree. All righty, as we wrap up the year, what celestial events should we be excited about in December? Well, one of the big ones I want to talk about isn't really an event. It's just a nightly thing you could look for, and that is the return of the constellation Orionid in the evening sky. It's been visible for late night and early morning stargazers for a couple of months now, but for the evening stargazers, this month will be the best time to start to see Orion in the evening sky, rising every night in the east right around 8 p.m. local time. So the good thing with this is that it's not a one-night event, so you can just check the AccuWeather app, see when you have the best cloud forecast in your area, and head out in the evening to get a great view of this famous constellation. And it's not by itself. Shortly after it rises, just below it, we'll have the star Sirius, otherwise known as the Dog Star, which is the brightest star in the night sky. So you definitely want to uh, head out this December and get some good looks of those constellations and stars throughout the month. Oh, definitely. And when is the peak to view the Geminid meteor shower? How many meteors per hour can one expect to see? Yeah, if you're going to stargaze on any night this month, I highly recommend the night of December 13th into the 14th for the Geminid meteor shower. Really one of the best meteor showers of the entire year. If you go out to a dark area, you can see over 100 shooting stars per hour. So uh, definitely uh, you want to see this event. And unlike other meteor showers throughout the year that they don't really become active until later in the night, say after 2 a.m. local time. The Geminids is one of those rare events where it's visible all night long. So you can go out in the evening and you won't see the 100 per hour, but you'll definitely see a handful of shooting stars, making this event perfect for younger stargazers because this does peak on a school night. So you won't have to lose any sleep, head outside at you know, 7, 8, 9 o'clock at night, and you'll have a good chance at seeing shooting stars. And really, this is the best chance at viewing a meteor shower until the spring, because after the Geminids, we have uh, a couple minor meteor showers, but then a long stretch without one. And we'll have to wait until the spring for the next chance to see one anywhere close to the Geminids. Okay. And how does the winter season affect what we can see in the night sky? Well, obviously, weather plays a big factor into stargazing because if it's cloudy, you can't see anything in the night sky. But winter is a little bit different than the summertime because when you think about summer, not only do you have the shorter nights, but there's more humidity and more moisture in the air. And as a result, we get a bit of a hazy sky, uh, sometimes a murky view of the heavens. But here in the wintertime, there's a lot less moisture in the atmosphere. So as a result, we have a crisper, cleaner view of the night sky. And when you look at the brighter stars, they'll actually twinkle more this time of year compared to the summer months. Now, to offset that, even though we do have these better views of the sky, it is a bit colder out there. So you're going to have to bundle up if you spend an extended period of time outside, like if you're going out to view that Geminid meteor shower. All right. You heard it here, folks. Not all bad when winter is here. Now, when is the cold moon? This is the first time I've heard of this expected to occur in December. And what distinguishes this moon from other full moons throughout the year? So the cold moon is simply the full moon that rises in December, the last full moon of the entire year. And this year it happens on the night of December 26th into the 27th. Now it's going to look like a typical full moon. It's not a super moon. It's not an eclipse or anything wild like that. Uh, but it does have a lot of nicknames based on the weather, starting with the cold moon. That's the most popular one because it is colder this time of year as we head into winter. Uh, but it has other weather-themed nicknames, including the snow moon, the winter maker moon, and this one's my favorite. I don't know the origins, but it's called the Frost Exploding Trees Moon. Uh, so call it what you want, but the night of uh, December 26th, step outside and you'll be able to see the last full moon of 2023.
Okay, with a name like that, this may become my favorite moon of the year. All right, AccuWeather astronomy expert Brian Leda, thank you so much for joining us again. Yeah, happy stargazing.